www.sbcontactonus.org. Southern Arkansas University feels like home. SAU feels like home because I've been treated like one of their own from the very beginning. While at SAU, I felt comfortable, encouraged, and motivated to succeed. SAU feels like home because the atmosphere makes me feel secure and like I'm a part of a family. SAU feels like home because everyone is here for our students. They care about our success. Come visit SAU and see why so many students are saying that Southern Arkansas University feels like home. makes Henderson a better choice in education? Is it the campus or the buildings? Is it class size or professors with PhDs? Is it the cost, the value? What is it about Henderson? It's me. A strong educational foundation from Henderson put Richard Jacobs on the road to becoming a doctor. Today, he's at the forefront of pediatric research and care. Henderson prepares today's students for tomorrow because what counts is what you become. Henderson State University. It's on us to stop sexual assault. In any way that we can. To get a friend home safe. To never blame the victim. It's on us. To stand up. To make our community safe for all. It's on us. It's on us. To look out for each other at parties. It's on us. To be more than just a bystander. To step up and say something. It's on us. All of us. To, to stop, stop sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. What makes Henderson a better choice in education? Is it the campus or the buildings? Is it class size or professors with PhDs? Is it the cost, the value? What is it about Henderson? It's me. A strong educational foundation from Henderson put Richard Jacobs on the road to becoming a doctor. Today, he's at the forefront of pediatric research and care. Henderson prepares today's students for tomorrow because what counts is what you become. Henderson State University. Opportunity begins here. Southeastern Oklahoma State University. Seize your opportunity. Soar to new heights with our nationally accredited aviation program. Seize your opportunity. Southeastern's renowned education program has launched thousands of teaching careers. Seize your opportunity. From occupational safety, health, and business to behavioral and natural sciences. Seize your opportunity. Southeastern Oklahoma State University. SC.edu. Log on now. And seize your opportunity. Southern Arkansas University feels like home. SAU feels like home to me because it is my home away from home. My professors, friends, and classmates have taken on a caring and supportive role for me. SAU feels like home because the faculty treats me like a part of their family and they do everything in their power to help me succeed. SAU feels like home to me because the atmosphere on campus makes me feel secure and like I'm part of a family. Come visit SAU and see why so many students are saying that Southern Arkansas University feels like Southern Nazarene University was just ranked the best college in the state of Oklahoma by Money Magazine. That's big news, but it's not a surprise to us. Money ranks SNU as one of the top 50 colleges you can actually get into, and in the top 50 most affordable private colleges in the nation. Why travel when Southern Nazarene University is right here in Bethany, Oklahoma? Inspired academic excellence in a success-driven environment. Southern Nazarene University, the best college in Oklahoma. At the University of Arkansas at Monticello, 
Yes, you can. For me, that meant that I could afford to go to college. When I was considering colleges, it was important to find one that my parents and I could afford. So I was happy to find that I could attend the University of Arkansas at Monticello at one of the lowest costs of any four-year college in the state. Affordability, tradition, a great college experience. It all comes together here at UAM. At the University of Arkansas at Monticello, yes you can. free-range chicken, you roam free. It's what you do. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to GEICO. It's what you do. Triangle solo? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Sam and Joanna saved by switching to Geico. Ow! 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Across divisions, sports, championships, and schools for nearly half a million student athletes. College. GAC Sports Network welcomes you to the following presentation of the Great American Conference. From the Bruin Fieldhouse in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, this is the 2018 Great American Conference Basketball Championships. Hello, friends. I'm Paul Smith. Joey McWilliams and Michael Westbrook will be along momentarily. We have already set one championship final. On the men's side, it will be sixth seed Arkansas Monticello against top seed Southern Nazarene. That game will be played tomorrow at 1. Now we start the business of figuring out the women's final, and our first semifinal today features top seed and regular season champion Southwestern Oklahoma against the fourth seed, Harding. The winner of this one goes on to play tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. for the Great American Conference Championship and the all-important automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. With the call at courtside are Joey McWilliams and Michael Westbrook. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you, Paul. A fun night ahead of us here in Bartlesville as we are here in semifinal Saturday in a matchup that's happened three times before here in Bartlesville, but not since 2014 is going to be set up, and we're going to have that contest play out before us a little bit later on. Just a few moments. It's Harding. It is Southwestern. It's the top seed, Lady Dogs, taking on the four seed, Harding. Let's get the starting lineup to you really quickly. The Harding, the number four seed, the visitors on the scoreboard wearing black today. Starters look like this. A 5'10 senior guard from North Little Rock, Arkansas. Number three, Fallon Miller. A six-foot freshman forward from Jesseville, Arkansas. Number 10, Kelly Lampo. A 5'10 sophomore guard from Frisco, Texas. Number 13, Peyton Padgett. A 5'11 senior forward from Paragold, Arkansas. Number 21, Lay Sydney Layrock. And a 5'10 freshman guard from Branson, Missouri. Number 24, Amanda Kearney. Harding coached by Tim Kirby. And the Lady Bisons are 17 and 14, 12 and 10 in the GAC. That's good enough for the number four seed is Bethany Franks for Southwestern. 
is set to jump center and get this started. She'll be going up against Lampo. Our second session of day three. Game number five of the women's tournament is underway and Southwestern controls. Let's go ahead and get those starters to you really quickly for the Lady Dogs. Starting lineup looks like this. A 6'2 junior guard from right here in Bartlesville. Number 12, Haley Tucker. You just saw a 5'8 sophomore guard from Meridian, Oklahoma, Coyle High School. Number 21, Tyra Aska. She gets the first points on the board for Southwestern. Also starting for Southwestern, 5'10 sophomore guard from Chester, Oklahoma. Number 15, Taylor Hedrick. A 5'9 junior guard from Piedmont, Oklahoma. Number 14, Hayden Pretty. And a 5'11 freshman forward from Norman. Number 23, Bethany Franks. Hometown girl, Haley Tucker. Missed that. Southwestern still owning a 2-0 lead. And a nice block from Hayden Pretty sends that one out of bounds. Harding will inbound baseline right. Good evening, I'm Joey McWilliams. And sitting next to Michael Westbrook, of course, you've already heard from Paul Smith this evening as we are pre pleased and privileged to get to bring you the GAC Women's Basketball Tournament tonight. Men's games have already gone to the finals. Uh, it's a championship match is set for tomorrow. Two semifinal matches on the women's side of the bracket tonight. And Michael, initially, as what a save by Aska, getting it over to Hedrick, and Southwestern brings it down the court. What do you think about this matchup? Well, both of these teams are tall and long inside. Interested to see how the freshman Kelly Lampo will play in this game. I think she's going to have to have a monstrous presence on the low block on both offense and defense for Harding to be successful. It's rare. Harding's an underdog going into this game, which is uh, not always the case come tournament time. I think Franks will have to do a good job on her on defense as well. That will be a, a fun matchup to watch. If Haley Tucker scores, Southwestern will be okay. Pretty down the court. Pretty is the number two option. And in a lot of places, she'd be the number one option. No doubt about that. I think in, in a lot of senses, Michael, it's 1A and 1B. Oh, there's no doubt um, about that. And Pretty puts two more points on the board. She is number 10 now all time on the scoring list, one of only 12 players in Southwestern history to log at least 1,000 points. And she puts two more up right then. Speaking of two more, how about the senior Sydney Layrock? Strong to the rack, and she has two on the board for Harding. Wasn't it fun to talk to Sydney Layrock yesterday in the post game? I got to ask her about being the older player coming into the press conferences, coming into the games, and what she does as a leader. And she said she does talk to the younger players and just tells them to settle down, stay calm, and play the game that Harding knows they can play. The end one successful for Layrock. Harding trails by just one point here now. As again, I alluded to the fact that these two teams have met three times before here in Bartlesville. Twice in the championship game and once in the semis like tonight. Southwestern came away with victories in all three of the previous meetings. Amanda Kearney's three-point attempt a little bit long. You go back to 2012, the first GAC tournament, and these two met in the championship game, Southwestern winning 69-58. The next season, they met in the semifinals. Southwestern again winning 82-68. And Southwestern in a big win over a tough Harding team in the championship game in 2014, 78-74. Michelle Fisher in that squad for the Lady Dogs. Tucker spin move, no good, and Pranks can't bring down the board. And Michael, you know, I, I feel like in this tournament, it's, it's been a situation where all year long, it's kind of been a, you, you feel like Southwestern is, is destined to meet Arkansas Tech at some point in time. They've met in the last two tournaments, and Tech's won both of those matchups. But there's a lot to be said for the Southwestern Harding meetings in this tournament as well. And that's what I was going to say. It's a real uh, sports triangle when you throw in Arkansas Tech into the mix, and they've got a couple of tournament championships as well. Hayden Pretty is having a good game so far, and I think that's good to see for Southwestern because so much attention, even myself, put it on Haley Tucker. Pretty's coming out and playing well. well. She used that as a full court layup drill and just went straight to the basket coast to coast. Harding on top now by three, excuse me. Southwestern on top by three. Nice turnaround from Fallon Miller. She's another one of those seniors for Harding's team. And Michael, you were talking about Sydney Layrock as Aska scored the first two points. She struggled a little bit shooting since then. You know, Layrock, we talked about her as a freshman. Miller, we talked about her as a freshman. And there are so many 
good freshmen and younger players in both the women's and men's tournament on display here in Bartlesville and, and throughout the league. But it is nice to see uh, a player like Sidney Layrock, a player like Fallon Miller, that, that they did well on the court as freshmen, and we've had a chance to see them grow up over the last four years. Well, and we've seen Fallon Miller score inside. Now Layrock again. They are taking it to Southwestern in the early going on the inside in the paint. Two points for Haley Tucker. And she's on the board for the first time. That's become the patented Haley Tucker move. Fakes the pass inside, goes back up with the left hand on the left side. Which brings me to the state mandated, to state mandated opportunity to tell you that Haley Tucker graduated from Bartlesville. That's right. How about Lay Rock? I think we're forced to say that. I think there's some kind of you know constitutional bylaw. <laughs> well, there's the answer. How about it? There's the answer. Hayden Pretty. And she is on fire. Well, it's going to be a fun one. <laughs> Triple digits, maybe, Joey? Uh, it could be. You know, I did want to take that opportunity to mention Bartlesville because you know, we usually have uh, uh, Destiny, who uh, plays for Bartlesville, comes and helps us along the bench as well. Every now and again brings us things and, and is a runner for the stats person. This plays for Bartlesville High School, so I'm going to drop this Bartlesville reference on you, okay? Okay. 6A consolation bracket, Bartlesville 34-32 over Shawnee. They'll move on to the Class 6A Girls State There's Tournament. Some defense there. there. you go. Yeah. We might see that in the first quarter here in this one. <laughs> well, we spend so much time here in Bartlesville, you, yeah. you almost feel like you, you you might root for the high school team. That's so right. there you go. Lady Bruins moving on to state. Meanwhile, we have a barn burner here. That one does not fall for Savannah Gray, a 5'6 junior from Fort Gibson. And the other direction, quick to the basket, Kearney. Harding back on top by one. Yeah, and Southwestern's going to have to find a stop for the shots that are falling around the rim right now for this Harding team. One of Layrock's shot was just a really, really good shot. The others have just been easy layups. There's your answer. There's, and there's your layup. That one not so easy. But I think that's what Aska brings to the table. She's going to go solid any way through, whether it's easy or not. Southwestern. Back on top by one free throw when we come back, back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. It's on us to stop sexual assault. In any way that we can. To get a friend home safe. To never blame the victim. It's on us. To stand up. To make our community safe for all. It's on us. It's on us to look out for each other at parties. It's on us. To be more than just a bystander. To step up and say something. It's on us, all of us. To, to stop, stop sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. There's a bison singular. There's some, some discrepancy within the GAC as how you should talk about bison plural or bisons, as is the case with Harding. So I'm just going to talk about that bison singular right there. Cheering things on tonight. Hey, is Harding Lady Bisons trailing by one. Asko on the line right now with an opportunity for the and one. And she completes it. Southwestern up 14-12. Michael? Did you expect this high octane of pace? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I thought <laughs> Harding would find a way to slow it down a little bit, and they might still try to do so. Sydney Jones, number 33 for Harding, checking into the game. Last year's most valuable player in the tournament as Harding won that. Defending champs, she's a 6'1 senior from North Little Rock. Gray's three off the mark. Jones, a sophomore, excuse me. Southwestern defeated Harding the last time around, 103 to 77. Joey, they hit 23 pointers in that game, and Savannah Gray came off the bench and hit six three pointers. Everything was going right for Southwestern 
that night. I think we're going to see a high-scoring game in this one. I don't think we're going to quite see 23-point makes. Now you say that. <laughs> we'll see. Gray picks up the foul. It's her first personal. Got back to get in front of Jones a little bit too late there. I didn't think I'd see two double overtime games already in the tournament either, so we've already hit that quota, so yeah, you never know. And we see Gray coming in. Jones already on her way up. Gray, a little, little slow getting there. Lampo being set to check in. Back into the contest for Harding. And also, as that one's tipped around, Harding's gonna keep it on its end of the court right now. Freshman, 5'8 freshman guard from Rosebud, Arkansas, number 14, Carissa Capel. You see her with the ball right there. She's back into the game. As well as six foot freshman forward from Melbourne, Arkansas, number 42, Kennedy Cooper. And Cooper's had this one tied up, locked up. The possession arrow favors Harding. Here comes Lampo and Layrock coming back in. Just so much size for Harding, so many different players that they can go to in the post. Of course, Tucker, she likes to shoot from outside. She's going to get those shots, but she's on defense, she's going to have to play inside a lot. Great job on the inbound. Hayden Pretty just stayed with Fallon Miller, and they both took a swipe at it. Miller touched it last, so it's a turnover, and Southwestern will get it back. Until Not for long. Hayden throws it to, uh, I think, the young or the gentleman sitting in the chair over there. It's not suited up for either one of these teams. Just the second turnover for Southwestern. Four already for Harding in the early going. I just, I like the tough defense on the inbound. I mean, pretty did a fantastic job. Lampo, the rebound and the putback. Harding back on top by one. Bethany Franks who pulled down a near GAC tournament record 21 rebounds on Thursday night. She's now the only person in the GAC to be averaging a double-double. Wow. The rebound average has gone up to 10.1. As Miller drives inside and gets that one to fall. Franks also scoring at a clip of 10.4 points per game. Now that's Haley Tucker territory right there when you're averaging a double-double in points and rebounds. She doesn't have the double-double right now, but she has two more points for her team. Gets it back to within one. Tucker's had a couple of layups. And look at that again. Fallon Miller in the same place on the court, and that's a solid defense to get the ball away from her. Coach Kelsey Music encouraging her team. You know, she's talked about what she expects of her team and what they have to do to win ball games. She knows that her team can score, and I think that's apparent if you've watched this team at all, even in the first eight minutes of this game or any other time. What they have to do is play the solid enough defense to make the lead hold. Tucker will go to the line to shoot two. Layrock will pick that up. Like the strategy here from Southwestern, trying to get Tucker on the Dribble drive to the rim, get a couple of easy shots early, close to the basket, maybe pick up a couple of fouls on the defenders, get some easy points at the free throw line. That'll eventually open up that outside game for her. First free throws attempted for Haley Tucker tonight. And the first one is good. Boy, all the stars are coming to play. <laughs> Tucker with five, Pretty with seven, Aska with four in the first quarter. <laughs> Second free throw good as well. Haley Tucker with 34 points on Thursday night in the incredible comeback win against eight-seeded Oklahoma Baptist. Tucker had 29 three points at three different times during this season, hasn't crossed that 30-point barrier. And Layrock lowers the shoulder and runs right over the defender there. That is Panina Faumui, the senior from Honolulu who has checked into the game, and what a great job taking that charge, and she's down the court right now. She holds her back. She's feeling it. Yeah, deafening crowd, too. Southwestern's brought a, brought a big crowd. They were excited about that one. Pretty, no good. Falmui, rebound, put back, won't go. And Lampo had good position there. I thought Falmui might have gone over her back. Lampo pulled in nine rebounds to go with 19 points in the win over Southeastern. She's stuck. She didn't want the ball up there. 
Skip pass to Caples and she'll reset. 10 on the shot clock. Knocked away nearly again. Shot clock winding down. Lampo spins inside. Count the basket. And the end one. And that was a Houdini play right there. She disappeared and reappeared on the other side of defenders and willed that ball into the basket. And the pass, Peyton Padgett bouncing that one in, just squeezing it through the window of space to get that to her. Padgett checks out as Kearney checks back in for the Lady Bisons. And one good for Lampo, Harding back on top by two. Pretty gives a little time now, slows things up. Tucker's going to drive right side, and we have a foul away from the ball. It's going to be charged to Kearney. And excuse me, that one's charged to Kennedy Cooper. Saw the 2-4 and read it as a 24, not a 42. Long inbound finally to Aska. Boy, she is taking it inside tonight. That one was work, Famui. Second rebound, second put back, no good. She'll go to the line. Michael, you were talking about the, the size that Harding brings out there night in and night out. But Southwestern's been able to pull down a couple of offensive boards here in the early going. They have, they have. And uh, you notice there a moment ago, Lampo just tried to play straight up, didn't want to commit the foul. It did anyways. I think they're going to have to just do a little bit better job of boxing out, get those taller players for Southwestern off the low blocks, give them a little more space to bring in the rebound. The foul movie misses. The first one is that foul is charged to Lampo. She takes a seat now. Coach Kirby having a long discussion with the official. Foul movie second free throw is good, so it's back to a one-point deficit. As time winds down here in the first quarter of a high-paced game, fast-paced game. Nice. Kennedy Cooper found a slim opening in the lane and took advantage of it. Cooper now drawing the Haley Tucker defensive assignment. Tough draw. She gets the block there. But Tucker will go to the line with a second effort. And Cooper picks up her second personal foul. She hasn't been out here that long. <laughs> Tucker's first free throw is good. And the junior now has seven to match her fellow junior guard, Hayden Pretty. First one was a nice block. Second with a little contact there. Southwestern still trails by one. Time winding down, five seconds. Capel spins, nearly travels, kicks out, block! And Southwestern on defense. Wow, what a block for Southwestern's Alexa Harvey, who had checked into the game. And with that defensive move and an otherwise offensive first quarter, Harding will go into the second quarter with a one-point advantage. We'll take a break. Back with the GAC Women's Basketball Tournament here on the GAC Sports Network. What makes Henderson a better choice in education? Is it the campus or the buildings? Is it class size or professors with PhDs? Is it the cost, the value? What is it about Henderson? It's me. A strong educational foundation from Henderson put Richard Jacobs on the road to becoming a doctor. Today, he's at the forefront of pediatric research and care. Henderson prepares today's students for tomorrow because what counts is what you become. Henderson State University. Opportunity begins here. Southeastern Oklahoma State University. Seize your opportunity. Soar to new heights with our nationally accredited aviation program. Seize your opportunity. Southeastern's renowned education program has launched thousands of teaching careers. Seize your opportunity. From occupational safety, health, and business to behavioral and natural sciences. Seize your opportunity. Southeastern Oklahoma State University. SC.edu. Log on now. And seize your opportunity.
We're here in the second quarter, and it feels like that this game just jumped center to get it started. I'm, I'm telling you what, it's gone by quickly. A fun game to watch, though. Harding going top by one. On pace for 88 points. <laughs> 84 for Southwestern. We'll see how it goes. Pretty little delay there. Didn't get the good look at the basket. Quickly ahead to Miller. Layrock with eight points in the first quarter for Harding. Tucker with eight for Southwestern. And Falmui has that go over ahead. Nice pass to Lampo, and Lampo turns around and puts in two. Well, it's a talked, great look. Yeah, we sorry, Joe. We've talked a lot about Harding and their passing ability, just squeezing the ball into a small space. There was another situation there where the pass was just perfect. Interesting to see Fahamui play as much as she's playing right now. You're gonna have to rely on her for defense. She's gonna come out of the game now and uh, Franks will be back in, especially after what Franks did um, in the quarterfinal game. But uh, you know, it's a long tournament and uh, just a freshman. Wanna make sure she's rested and ready to go when she is on the floor. Fahamui a senior as well. Michael, I, the last trip down the court is Miller has it right now. That was her pass inside to Lampo. She passes it inside this time to Cooper, and the result not the same. Fallon Miller with three assists in the early going for Harding. You're not going to see, I don't believe, as many assists with this Southwestern team as Aska with the offensive foul. And the reason for that is just what you witnessed there. It's a a dribble drive offense, a dribble penetration offense, and players will pass the ball around the outside until the open look is there, take it through the lane. You get one-on-one -on -one opportunities often that way, and and so you don't see as many assists. For Miller, though, that's the way they move the ball around for Harding. Yeah, you know, I still think uh, eventually that outside game's going to open up for Tucker, though, as they drive. Eventually, Harding's going to collapse in on them. That'll open up the outside game for those open shots. Right now, they haven't collapsed that well. Southwestern's been able to get some offensive rebounds. They've been able to get some layups. That was a nice block from Hedrick. Goes out of bounds. So Harding keeps it there. Shot clock did not reset. In fact, Southwestern's only taken two three-point attempts. One of two. Harding's one of four. There's the help. And Franks steals the ball and then goes out of bounds. Yeah, that's good defense underneath, though. She was uh, pushed pretty far below the rim. If Lampo could have gotten around her, it probably would have been an easy two. Good job to stay with it. Well, down low, the Southwestern defense, as Layrock gets around Tucker, Franks is saying so tightly on Layrock, she's not able to get over and help. So it is a definitely a one-on-one -on -one situation often on defense. Franks yeah. now, the other direction. The move on Lampo doesn't fly. Freshman well, against freshman there. Boy, that was one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody else was standing at the three-point line. Tucker may have gotten a fingertip on that shot from Miller. Here we go, Joey. It's about to pick up again, I think. Pretty got away with the travel there. It slowed down for two minutes. And Hedrick threw that one near the basket. Now, Southwestern trailing by five. Things got away from them a little bit. On Thursday night, as Aska picks up another foul, Aska with a monster block on Thursday night. That one similar, but she picked up the foul there as she sends Kearney to the line to shoot two. She might check out of the game with two fouls. The win on Thursday night was something that I don't believe any of us on Adam Hooper Memorial Press Row had seen before. It was unlike anything I'd seen. I spoke with Southwestern Sports Information Director Doug Self, and he hadn't seen anything like that before. Michael, what we witnessed uh, with an 18, excuse me, yes, an 18-point run by Oklahoma Baptist to take a 16-point lead, it was followed immediately by a 25-point run from Southwestern to ultimately close out and win the game. Yeah, the run for Oklahoma Baptist was the end of the third, start of the fourth quarter. They scored the first 10 points of the fourth quarter, led by Shaylin Coleman, who finished with 28 points. And you thought it, seven and a half minutes to go, a 16-point lead for Oklahoma Baptist that they were maybe going to advance to the uh, semifinals. All of a sudden, I said it on the air, simple statement, Southwestern's been here, Oklahoma Baptist has not been, and that turned out to be the difference down the stretch. Really was 25 straight points. Closed out the game on a 27 to three run. 
and came away with the win. Now, Harding, though, Michael, has been here before. Yeah, they have, <laughs> but... As a matter of fact, this is the defending champion, Harding Lady Bisons, for the GAC Conference Tournament. But Southwestern, you know, has had their number. That's right. Tucker solid to the basket, and that broke a little drought for Southwestern. Harding's lead down to four. When we talk about Harding having been here before, yes, they have. No doubt about that. And quite a run through the playoffs last year, making it all the way to the Division II Final Four. This is a different team than that was. Many of the same pieces, but it has a different feel. And what a great job by Franks. Looks over to the side, finds a cutter in Pretty, and Pretty with two more. Excuse me, that was Gray. Yeah, no Andy Haney out there uh, this year for Harding. We talked about her over the last four years. But um, still, they've got a, a lot of players that can protect the basketball and run the point. And Harding started off just really rocky. Uh, and expecting to have Caroline Hogue back this year, who was such a presence last year, and she ended up not returning. That made a, a big difference for Harding. They had to adjust to that, and, uh, boy, they have really played well down the stretch. It's been the defense, as we've talked about, that everybody has taken note of. Oh, no doubt. This is a pace. <laughs> what a look. What a look from Pretty to Tucker. Well, we were Think they played a game or two together <laughs> yeah. before? We this were is talking about Harding passing the ball. Now it's Southwestern. It is. In the last two trips down the court, it has been Southwestern. This is a pace that favors Southwestern, no doubt about that. Time out of the court. Let's catch our breaths, and uh, we'll take the time out as well. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. Southern Nazarene University was just ranked the best college in the state of Oklahoma by Money Magazine. That's big news, but it's not a surprise to us. Money ranks SNU as one of the top 50 colleges you can actually get into and in the top 50 most affordable private colleges in the nation. Why travel when Southern Nazarene University is right here in Bethany, Oklahoma? Inspired academic excellence in a success-driven environment. Southern Nazarene University, the best college in Oklahoma. At the University of Arkansas at Monticello, yes you can. For me, that meant that I could afford to go to college. When I was considering colleges, it was important to find one that my parents and I could afford. So I was happy to find that I could attend the University of Arkansas at Monticello at one of the lowest costs of any four-year college in the state. Affordability, tradition, a great college experience. It all comes together here at UAM. At the University of Arkansas at Monticello, yes you can. Tell you what, mascot there on the court, not the only one tonight. There have been bodies all over the court tonight. That's right. Buff Flying the bison. There there. Buff the bison. And Duke the bulldog on the other side. As long as I don't fall down, we're okay. <laughs> Caples decides to go back from the left to the right in the corner. And Frank's got a hand in on that. And that may be the first time tonight that two players have touched the ball that it didn't go out on hard. <laughs> right. It's going to stay on the Lady Bison's end. 27 all midway through the second quarter. And Askin with the near steal. I'll tell you what, Michael, I, I don't think, I can't say enough about this inbound defense for what Southwestern's doing here because we've seen lapses at times couple different games and they're not letting anything come in well, without have, it being contested. When you have the defensive player of the year out there, that That's helps. exactly right. Dribbling through, stepping in the passing lane. Pretty comes away with it and down the court. Grail, wait for her teammates to get down here and Tucker sets things up. Could be an isolation and Cooper coming out a little bit too high, picks up the foul. That's number three. And quickly Cooper will go take a seat as Mackenzie McNamara checks in. McNamara, six foot one senior forward from Plano. Five players on this Harding roster at 5'11 or taller. She's one of them. Pretty goes right up and through Peyton Padgett. And Southwestern, nice little run of their own right now. It's an 8-0 run for the last minute and 40 seconds. Harding needs to get an answer here. Franks, and she's tied up with Lampo down low, and they just locked hands for a moment. Franks is going to pick up that foul. 
we obviously don't see these teams play as often as the coaches do. They have access to all the game film and everything. I'd like to ask Coach Music, what did she see on film that allowed her to set up the game plan to just drive the basketball at the rim? I know that is their offense, but I was looking at it from the perspective of how are you going to get past this Harding defense as tall as they are? But they're going right at them anyways. Michael, can I say something about the inbound defense again? There you go. A five-second call. That's rare. Sorry, I don't mean to run this into the ground, but that's impressive. Well, foul's and, adding up against Harding. Well, they really are. McNamara puts Pretty on the court. Foul movie, by the way, checked in as Franks went out. Aska went out. And Alexa Harvey came in. Harvey, by the way, a freshman, 5'6 guard from Weatherford. And she takes it through, kicks over for Gray. Tucker lost it and was the last one to touch it. She turns it over now. Harding has not put any points on the board for three minutes and four seconds of game time. Lampo facing up on Falmui. Point blank twice and a foul on Lampo from behind as she goes up. She'll earn it at the free throw line if she's to get two here. Harding 0 for the last six field goal opportunities. I'm thinking they're going to have to start hitting some shots from outside too. One of eight from three-point range. By the way, that foul is charged to Pretty. Tucker comes away with the board here. Contested a little bit. Pretty for Southwestern. Just her first personal foul. Tucker strong to the basket. Southwestern. Up by three now. This one's gone back and forth. Harding had a six-point advantage just a few moments ago. And Lampo cuts it to just a one-point deficit. You know, we heard a coach following a game today, Coach Adam Bohach, talking about the Southern Nazarene win. It's pretty shot to the back iron. And Lampo knocks it out of bounds. He was talking about the... The game, of course, Southern Nazarene victorious over Southeastern a little bit earlier. Said a couple of times his team had a five-point lead. He said, you know, yeah. really, that's a good lead. <laughs> and, and, and we don't always think it is. <laughs> Southwestern's fans wanted some contact as Tucker shoots that one from way outside. Harvey with the board and another foul on Harding. Harding had a six-point lead. According to Coach Bohach, that's a good lead, and sure. really it is. But in a game like this, it's you know back and forth so easily. Yeah, that wasn't that long ago. That was about four minutes ago Harding had that lead. I think a six-point lead in this game is going to be really huge. Harding just one of their last seven field goals. My goodness. They call the foul. And Michael, I, I apologize. The near official was right in the way. I well, couldn't see the. I'll tell you what didn't happened. Didn't see the foul. It looked like a massive block from Harding's Caples, but there was contact. Well, Gray gets the first free throw to fall. Let me get to see it from a different angle. Wow, there's a lot of ball to that too. Mm -hmm. Lampo on the bench right now. Michael, how's this for some numbers? 12 for 12. Lampo was 8 for 8 in the quarterfinal win the other night against Southeastern. She's 4 for 4 so far tonight. She has not missed in the GAC tournament. I'm thankful to have Eric Moyer to help us out with that because in my head I was thinking, I don't know how often she has missed. She's on the bench right now getting a little bit of a, a break, but yeah, it's been impressive from the freshmen. You see the, some of the Southwestern men's basketball players up above that Harding goal. Saw them on screen a second ago, rooting on Southwestern. 
Nice adjustment. Shot doesn't fall, though. And Southwestern takes it the other way. And we asked Coach Kirby about all the freshmen that he seems to bring in from year to year that get playing time. He said, oh, yeah, we're going to play them. <laughs> Long range for Gray. Put back too strong for Falmui. And the senior getting some quality moments out here tonight. Gets a hand up. Jones goes into her. And Jones will pick up the offensive foul. Well, that's twice in this game we've seen a call that could have been an and one play wiped out because of the offensive foul. And Coach Kirby is about as fiery as we've seen him. Sidney Jones will take a seat immediately following that. Jones has seen only five minutes of action. Coach Kirby has been warned. He says you got to call that. Well, if they're, and, and Michael, here's, again, we talked about this in the previous game, advantage, disadvantage, where the fouls come in. Player foul Mui was not set. She had, she had not stopped moving. It was just the initiation of the offensive side, the shoulder to put her on the court like that. And that's, that's what that is. If you're looking at it just from, well, foul Mui wasn't set. Well, she wasn't. McNamara, top of the arc. She doesn't want to shoot it there. Instead, she'll drive. Pretty reaches in and knocks it out. Tucker trying to get the call reversed and not going to have any luck this time. <laughs> Triple team down low. McNamara outside. Now she'd rather drive it in. Lampo. Has it knocked away. That's Pretty with a rock into the hands of Tucker, and Pretty will get it right back. Lampo's first miss of the tournament. There's just no low gear. When you get recruited to play in Weatherford, better expect to run. And the one-two combo at 25 of the team's 34 points. Magnamero posting now. She doesn't want it outside instead. Kearney for three. Amanda Kearney, the freshman making a statement here just before the half in Bartlesville. Game like this, we've seen only three three-point makes in the first half. Foul Mui up and over Lampo. Can't get that one to fall. Tucker was standing almost near half court on that possession. That's not going to work. Tucker redirects that shot. Lampo didn't get a good look there. Small difference between the shot clock and the game clock. I don't think that's going to be a factor. And it's not. Harvey up and in. They probably have five shots before that. <laughs> that's half's exactly over. right. <laughs> shot clock? What shot clock? <laughs> we don't need a shot clock. Ten seconds left on the game clock here in the first half, though. Harding, one more opportunity. Pump fake. Kearney, long two. Off the back iron. Doesn't fall. And folks. We have a fun one here in Bartlesville. First semifinal women's game of the evening, and it's a three-point difference between top-seeded Southwestern and the fourth seed Harding. We throw it to Paul Smith now. 36-33, Southwestern Oklahoma leading Harding at the half. We're going to be back in just a few minutes with the second half of this one. Don't you go anywhere, folks. This is the GAC Sports Network. <laughs>
you're a free-range chicken, you roam free. It's what you do. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to GEICO. It's what you do. A triangle solo? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Sam and Joanna saved by switching to GEICO. Ow! 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Across divisions, sports, championships, and schools for nearly half a million student athletes. College sports create lifelong opportunity, and that starts with education. We've raised the academic bar, so more are earning degrees, creating healthier campuses by working with the nation's brightest minds and making sure more have the chance to succeed and are supported on their journey. But beyond the numbers, it's about opportunity, and we're working to provide it for every student athlete. Don't you worry, my child. Everything's going to be just fine. Little darling, you keep on walking. Because I ain't never going to leave your side. As kids fall in love with sports, our universities are working every day to keep college sports safe. So you can watch them play with a little less worry and a little more joy. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin. Or whether you're rich, poor, or in the middle. No matter what you play, if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Oh, oh. The running of the bulldogs? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Aaliyah saved by switching to Geico. I knew engineering would be a challenge, but that hasn't stopped me. Here, I could create a new organization and networking opportunities for women in STEM fields. At Arkansas Tech, I'm more than just a student. My name is Emily Torrialba, and I am a trailblazer. At Arkansas Tech University, I find harmony between art and science. Here, I can sing into a microphone and learn how one works. Whether it's performing on the field or solving an equation, I'm constantly evolving to meet tomorrow's challenges. I am a musician and a future engineer. My name is Jordan Davis, and I'm a lifelong learner. In high school, people described me as bright, hardworking, and dedicated. That I had a big heart because I care about people and doing the right things. Now, everywhere I look, I see an entire community just like that. Learning more, doing more, and caring more. A community of mission, Harding University. Southern Arkansas University feels like home. SAU feels like home to me because it is my home away from home. My professors, friends, and classmates have taken on a caring and supportive role for me. SAU feels like home because the faculty treats me like a part of their family and they do everything in their power to help me succeed. SAU feels like home to me because the atmosphere on campus makes me feel secure and like I'm part of a family. Come visit SAU and see why so many students are saying that Southern Arkansas University feels like Southern Arkansas University feels like home. SAU feels like home because I've been treated like one of their own from the very beginning. While at SAU, I felt comfortable, encouraged, and motivated to succeed. SAU feels like home because the atmosphere makes me feel secure and like I'm a part of a family. 
SAU feels like home because everyone is here for our students. They care about our success. Come visit SAU and see why so many students are saying that Southern Arkansas University feels like home. Southern Arkansas University feels like home. SAU feels like home because I've made lifelong friendships with people who care about me. SAU feels like home because I'm part of so many traditions that create meaning for my college experience. SAU feels like home because it's the perfect size to find people you share common interests with. Come visit SAU and see why so many students are saying that Southern Arkansas University feels like home. Hi, Connor here to show you around Swasu and why we love it here. Well, your friends are more like family. I love the sports and concerts at the Pioneer Cellular Event Center and more than 100 clubs. The small class sizes, 100 fields of study, and a nationally recognized pharmacy college. Close to OKC is the best place for me. Come and see for yourself. It's on us to stop sexual assault. In any way that we can. To get a friend home safe. To never blame the victim. It's on us. To stand up. To make our community safe for all. It's on us. It's on us. To look out for each other at parties. It's on us. To be more than just a bystander. To step up and say something. It's on us, all of us, to, to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. What makes Henderson a better choice in education? Is it the campus or the buildings? Is it class size or professors with PhDs? Is it the cost, the value? What is it about Henderson? It's me. A strong educational foundation from Henderson put Richard Jacobs on the road to becoming a doctor. Today, he's at the forefront of pediatric research and care. Henderson prepares today's students for tomorrow because what counts is what you become. Henderson State University. Opportunity begins here. Southeastern Oklahoma State University. Seize your opportunity. Soar to new heights with our nationally accredited aviation program. Seize your opportunity. Southeastern's renowned education program has launched thousands of teaching careers. Seize your opportunity. From occupational safety, health, and business to behavioral and natural sciences. Seize your opportunity. Southeastern Oklahoma State University. SC.edu. Log on now. And seize your opportunity. Southern Nazarene University was just ranked the best college in the state of Oklahoma by Money Magazine. That's big news, but it's not a surprise to us. Money ranks SNU as one of the top 50 colleges you can actually get into, and in the top 50 most affordable private colleges in the nation. Why travel when Southern Nazarene University is right here in Bethany, Oklahoma? Inspired academic excellence in a success-driven environment. Southern Nazarene University, the best college in Oklahoma. At the University of Arkansas at Monticello, yes you can. For me, that meant that I could afford to go to college. When I was considering colleges, it was important to find one that my parents and I could afford. So I was happy to find that I could attend the University of Arkansas at Monticello at one of the lowest costs of any four-year college in the state. Affordability, tradition, a great college experience. It all comes together here at UAM. At the University of Arkansas at Monticello, yes you can. free-range chicken, you roam free. It's what you do. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to GEICO. It's what you do.
A triangle solo? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Sam and Joanna saved by switching to GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Across divisions, sports, championships, and schools for nearly half a million student athletes. College sports create lifelong opportunity, and that starts with education. We've raised the academic bar, so more are earning degrees, creating healthier campuses by working with the nation's brightest minds, and making sure more have the chance to succeed and are supported on their journey. But beyond the numbers, it's about opportunity, and we're working to provide it for every student athlete. Don't you worry, my child. Everything's going to be just fine. Little darling, you keep on walking. Because I ain't never going to leave your side. As kids fall in love with sports, our universities are working every day to keep college sports safe so you can watch them play with a little less worry and a little more joy. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin. Or whether you're rich, poor, or in the middle. No matter what you play, if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Oh, oh. The running of the bulldogs? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Aaliyah saved by switching to Geico. I knew engineering would be a challenge, but that hasn't stopped me. Here, I could create a new organization and networking opportunities for women in STEM fields. At Arkansas Tech, I'm more than just a student. My name is Emily Torrialba, and I am a trailblazer. At Arkansas Tech University, I find harmony between art and science. Here, I can sing into a microphone and learn how one works. Whether it's performing on the field or solving an equation, I'm constantly evolving to meet tomorrow's challenges. I am a musician and a future engineer. My name is Jordan Davis, and I'm a lifelong learner. In high school, people described me as bright, hardworking, and dedicated. That I had a big heart because I care about people and doing the right things. Now, everywhere I look, I see an entire community just like that. Learning more, doing more, and caring more. A community of mission, Harding University. Southern Arkansas University feels like home. SAU feels like home to me because it is my home away from home. My professors, friends, and classmates. We have a fun one here in Bartlesville right now. The top seed Southwestern taking on the four seed Harding. 36-33 the score right now at the break. And if you were expecting an exciting game, well, this is the one for you. No doubt about that. This is not disappointing at all. Fun one here in Bartlesville. I'm Joey McWilliams along with Michael Westbrook. Paul Smith is here as well. And Michael, numbers that might stand out to you from the first half. Four players in double figures already. 10 for Kelly Lampo, 10 for Sydney Layrock. That's a freshman senior combo. And then two juniors, Haley Tucker 14, Hayden Pretty with 11. It's going to be a high scoring second half, I would imagine, just like it was in the first. And inbounding right in front of where we are sitting here to start the second half, Sydney Layrock. Gets it in to Kelly Lampo. Harding, starters out on the court. Uh, look like the same starting lineup as we saw to open the game. And that's Miller, Lampo, Paget, Layrock, and Kearney. Miller with the ball at the top of the key. Senior to senior. and Keep it that way. 
Lane opens up. Nice move from Fallon Miller. She got around Hayden Pretty and had a clear path to the basket. For Southwestern, starting five out there as well. Pretty with the ball, as well as Tucker, Franks, Aska, and Hedrick. Well, Pretty might not have made the shot, but she stayed with it, did not hit the rim, so 10 to shoot here. And Franks thinking better of the shot outside. Instead, she'll drive in. Initiates contact, and Lampo comes away with the block. And Lampo's feet never even left the ground. Just stayed down, kept the hands up. In good position on defense. Harding with an opportunity now to take the lead here in the opening minutes of the third quarter. And Franks was there. Ultimately, Aska comes away with it. Miller thought she saw something on the other side of the post and couldn't deliver. Tucker, baseline, reverse, good. Harding comes in to this GAC tournament semifinal with an all-time record here in Bartlesville at the GAC tournament of 12 and four. Southwestern comes in to this GAC tournament semifinal with an all-time tournament record of 12 and four. Yeah. <laughs> Think these two aren't evenly matched? Exactly. Aska driving in. And the charge is not, is not a charge, excuse me. It is a blocking foul charged rather to it. Amanda Kearney. Hey Joey, I've been trying to find a way to make this point. I don't want to offend anybody, but as people know, I called Southeastern games from 2009 to 2013. <laughs> Southwest, Southwestern, that's not the offensive part, okay. no. Southwestern was not a good basketball team during those years. Southeastern beat up on them. Other teams in the league beat up on them. What Kelsey Music has been able to do in the last decade now, right? I mean, she's been there a while. What she's been able to do to turn around the uh, Southwestern program is remarkable. Yes, it really is. She has put her stamp on the program, and it really takes her personality as, as, as teams often do. She was a, a very good collegiate player in her own right, and she has transferred that and helped to foster a love for basketball with these players as well. Foul on the court, this one. Is that on Tucker? I believe it's going to be on Tucker. It is, it's her first. Well, I had my view shielded that time by the referee, so. Tell you what, and it is interesting. From where we're sitting right here, we have a great view of the court, unless the ball is at a certain spot. Yeah. <laughs> Watch uh, your monitor, as the yes. director would say, right? <laughs> Foul Mui coming in as Bethany Franks picks up her third personal foul. Two minutes and 11 seconds into the third quarter. Caples, who's also checked in the game, the freshman, gets it back in the left corner. Layrock goes into a double team. Fights for the ball, but Tucker ultimately comes away with it. A little bit more on Coach Music, three-time GAC Coach of the Year. Her first season, three wins. And Tucker, and by the way, she's a little slow. She took one of the face down here, and I don't know if she's bleeding or not. There's a timeout on the court. Michael, let's come back and lead with that in just a moment. We'll take it as well. Southwestern on top by five. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. Have taken on a caring and supportive role for me. SAU feels like home because the faculty treats me like a part of their family, and they do everything in their power to help me succeed. SAU feels like home to me because the atmosphere on campus makes me feel secure and like I'm part of a family. Come visit SAU and see why so many students are saying that Southern Arkansas University feels like home. Southern Arkansas University feels like home. SAU feels like home because I've been treated like one of their own from the very beginning. While at SAU, I felt comfortable, encouraged, and motivated to succeed. SAU feels like home because the atmosphere makes me feel secure and like I'm a part of a family. SAU feels like home because everyone is here for our students. They care about our success. Come visit SAU and see why so many students are saying that Southern Arkansas University feels like home. All right, Coach Kirby drawing things up for his hardy Lady Bisons as uh, his team needed a bit of a break, so he calls the timeout. In the meanwhile, 
Tucker seems to be okay on the far bench, and, and there doesn't seem to be any blood, so she'll be able to come right back out, which leads us to Michael Westbrook. Yeah, so we were talking about Coach Kelsey Music. Three wins, 24 losses in her first season, seventh place in the Lone Star Conference North, and then two years later, a 20-win season, and they're GAC Tournament champions. They've had five 20-win seasons plus a 19-win campaign. So the turnaround has been something impressive. No doubt about that. And, you know, that's the kind of thing as Layrock's long-range three doesn't quite go. Working hard for it. Good job by Padgett to keep it on her end. And Lampo will go up and over Falmui. Michael, that, that kind of not only success, but longevity in the program is how Coach Music is able to recruit so well in Oklahoma, Western Oklahoma specifically, although she made it out here to Bartlesville to get Haley Tucker. Yeah. Falmui was standing on the line, pretty lost the ball, and it went to Falmui, but it's a turnover as she was out of bounds. Layrock spins and faces up against Tucker down low. Triple team there. And Whistle after foul. the fact, and Foul Mui is going to pick that one up. And that is her second personal foul. Uh, Layrock was so far into the spin already, couldn't do much with it. No real opportunity to pass the ball back out. Foul on the court means it's an inbound. Coach Kirby's not happy, I don't think. And he's asking for everybody to uh, hold play. Okay, they're going to inbound it anyway. They sure are. I, and and you have to. You can't. And, and with respect to Coach Kirby. What do you think he was you, arguing you, there? He wants it to be a shooting foul, I okay. believe. Doesn't matter. They're going to get three out of it right there. But you can't stop and just have the conversation like that. The official does have to inbound it unless you call a timeout. It worked out to his advantage no, anyway. he really did. And Harding takes away a significant amount of the deficit. By the way, while we're talking about the coaches, Coach Kirby told us yesterday in the post game. he said, I'm sorry, guys, I, you ask a question, and sometimes I have a tendency just to keep talking. No, Coach, we like that. Thank you, Coach, because uh, yes. we, we like it when he gives those long answers. And Fal Mui has gone down. Ankle hurting, it looks like, right there, so they're going to check on her. There was an official timeout. My goodness, this could be a huge loss for Southwestern. Talks about what Fal Mui has done in this game and logging some big minutes, especially on defense. Let's go ahead and take a timeout for a moment as uh, we'll be back here on the GAC Sports Network. Southern Arkansas University feels like home. SAU feels like home because I've made lifelong friendships with people who care about me. SAU feels like home because I'm part of so many traditions that create meaning for my college experience. SAU feels like home because it's the perfect size to find people you share common interests with. Come visit SAU and see why so many students are saying that Southern Arkansas University feels like home. Southern Arkansas University feels like home. SAU feels like home because I've made lifelong friendships with people who care about me. SAU feels like home because I'm part of so many traditions that create meaning for my college experience. SAU feels like home because it's the perfect size to find people you share common interests with. Come visit SAU and see why so many students are saying that Southern Arkansas University feels like home. Hi, Connor here to show you around Swasu and why we love it here. Well, your friends are more like family. I love the sports and concerts at the Pioneer Cellular Event Center and more than 100 clubs. The small class sizes, 100 fields of study, and a nationally recognized pharmacy college. Close to OKC is the best place for me. Come and see for yourself. <laughs> Foul Mui is being assisted at first and now simply escorted off the court. Stop in action 
And for Southwestern, substitution, sophomore, 6'2 sophomore center, Nicole Middleton from Enid will come in. And she'll draw duty on Kelly Lampo. <laughs> How do you like that? Coming off the bench and uh, <laughs> gets to guard a fantastic freshman. Uh, it didn't take long for her to pick up a foul. That's really something. Yeah. And Middleton picks up her first foul, three seconds into her time here in Bartlesville. Try to clog up the middle again. I, I'll tell you what, Michael, if I'm Harding, I get it to Lampo. Well, they're trying to for sure. Tucker's not going to let that happen. And, th and that's with respect to Middleton. It would be, it doesn't matter who's coming in. Fresh off the bench like that, Lampo is having a great tournament so far. Do your best to take advantage of a situation of, of some fresh and new legs. Well, by the time Lampo gets in position, they've worked the ball the other way. Miller again from the corner. Fallon Miller, the senior, has put her team on top. Uh, Coach Kirby's got to be happy to see his senior step up right now. Eight points is a big game for her so far. Hedrick had backed down on the freshman. Instead, kicked it back outside. Middleton, turnaround jumper, no good. And the rebound, Lampo. Quick possession. You can feel the momentum swinging here. Well, you sure can. Well, Middleton playing well inside. Lampo well got enough. around her. Nope, not well enough. Lampo got around her. What? I, I like the way Middleton was guarding her. If you're going to get Lampo the ball, you'd have to throw it over the top, and they were still able to do that. Yes. Tucker spins, throws that one near the basket. She was looking for the, the foul there, didn't get that call. And Pretty, who has been pretty much everywhere on both ends of the court, knocks that out of bounds, which will take us to a media timeout. We'll take this one as well. Harding back on top, now by three. Back on the GAC Sports Network. makes Henderson a better choice in education? Is it the campus or the buildings? Is it class size or professors with PhDs? Is it the cost, the value? What is it about Henderson? It's me. A strong educational foundation from Henderson put Richard Jacobs on the road to becoming a doctor. Today, he's at the forefront of pediatric research and care. Henderson prepares today's students for tomorrow because what counts is what you become. Henderson State University. Conversation there among the officials. Our conversation is about Harding and the way it's pulled back into the lead. A three-point advantage. Fallon Miller with a big three-pointer just a moment ago. Harding needing to win in order to continue its postseason. A loss here would mean the end of the season for Harding. Not so much for Southwestern. Southwestern, the number two team in the central region, will be moving on to play in the NCAA tournament, win or lose tonight or tomorrow if the Lady Dogs were able to come away victorious tonight. Harding needs to earn the automatic bid to advance to the NCAA tournament. And that's one way to do it. Freshman coming in with two points as Caples has two and Harding on top now by five. I'll tell you the other team in the mix right now and we'll see Arkansas Tech and Henderson State in our final game of the day. Tucker shot a little short, can't get the board. Middleton locked up with Lampo and Lampo just ripped it away. And Joey, right now, I think uh, Harding's going to dominate inside. Foul Mui on the bench. I think they just keep it in the paint. Well, there's the pass back to Lampo, who kicks it back outside. Middleton coming to help. Lampo adjusted in the air. We're talking about Arkansas Tech and Henderson State is our next game. Henderson State obviously needs the automatic bid, but listening and looking around to Tech, count the basket for Pretty as she just simply went around Peyton Padgett. Tech as the number eight team currently in the regional rankings in the central region likely just needs to get the automatic bid as well. I, it would yeah. be tough for Tech to hold on to that eight 
ranking if the Golden Suns were to lose tonight or tomorrow. Sure. And Pretty not able to get the end one, but she does get the two points count, so back to a five-point game. Pass into Lampo again. Middleton got a hand up this time, and Lampo a little bit upset that Middleton was in the vicinity. Uh, Southwestern wanted Lampo to be called for a foul. She came around, and her elbow went up, and now we're getting some uh, an emotional response here. And you're likely to get one from the bench, too. Pretty simply drew the contact. There's no doubt about that. She didn't expect to make that shot. She was trying to get the contact. She'll go to the line to shoot, too. And then there will be more free throws attempted. As we see Pretty going up, Padgett had her hands over just enough. And then a little bit of a nudge after the fact, and that's where the technical was levied. Yeah, you can't do that. I don't know if she would have fallen back that far on that nudge, though. But you still, no, you can't, you, can't do you that can't after do the it. whistle. Coach Kirby's coming over to get an explanation. Well, and, and you know, he, he, he deserves an explanation for any technical on one of his players. There's no doubt about that, whether he saw the little nudge after the fact or, or what. They'll always review these to see if it needs to be anything more, and hopefully we'll get word from the official here in just a moment to find out uh, what this is, is all about. So the elbow that came up, honestly, Michael, it, it, it was extracurricular. It did warrant the attention of the officials, but not for anything of, of, of a massive flagrant. Yeah. We'll see it again here. She didn't like it. Pretty there. And Padgett there as well. Yeah, they say you always see the second person. Right, yeah. <laughs> you do. I have five kids. I still see the second person. <laughs> I know there was a first person initiating, though. I'll right. tell you that right now. There's always that first person initiating. That's well, almost always. Crucial spot in the game here, getting close to the end of the third quarter. Harding is on a 12-2 run with a five-point advantage right now. And this could really turn things if uh, it works towards the favor of Southwestern getting extra free throws. Duke the Bulldog in the house tonight, the Bruin Field House. Well, you know, one of the things that that's here, I mean, that the Lady Bulldogs down again, as they were on Thursday night against the number eight seed, hasn't seemed to affect them that affect them that much. And you see they're just going at it and, and trying to Keep on going strong and, and uh, pretty, you know, uh, to her credit, trying to make something happen for her team. If you can't make the shots, at least try to get to the free throw line. Although right. she missed her last free throw attempt. Well, right now, Joey, it sits with three fouls for Peyton Pageant. She picked up the personal foul and then the technical foul. And so that's where we're at right now. I guess they're trying to see if there's anything after that, a reaction from Southwestern? I, because if, if they called the technical on Padgett, then there's not much else to review, I, right? I, I can't imagine anything else. If there's an elbow, it was nowhere near the face or anything like that. So It all started back at this end. Lampo, as she was coming down the court, kind of raised her arms up. Didn't really cause much of a problem with the Southwestern player, but the Southwestern bench wanted a call to be made there. Yeah. And then it just got a little bit more heated at the other end. So Amanda Kearney checks in now for Peyton Padgett, who will take a seat for a moment, and we'll see how long she sits. She's been pretty effective so far in this game tonight. You see it on the stat line, Padgett, well, not so much. She's had six rebounds and two assists. She's been a presence. I'll tell you what, beyond just getting some free throws and some points back, I think this favors Southwestern because I have a feeling they're going to go full throttle the next 316 of this third quarter. They're, they're rested right now. They've had a long break over there, and they're going to be ready to run up and down the court and uh, try to get this thing back to a track meet pace that favors them. Well, before they're due, there's going to be at least two free throws and four with the technical. Oh, That's a long discussion. It is taking a while. You're right. Coach Kirby's going to get an explanation. Here comes Coach Music. And hopefully we get an explanation as well. So as they're talking about that, we'll take a moment. 
There's a foul. So there are two fouls. So Pageant picks up the personal foul. Yes. And then there's going to be a uh, foul on Hayden Pretty Hayden for Pretty. taunting, followed by the reactionary push of Peyton Pageant for the technical. So we right? know for sure there are going to be two free throws. That that will come. Yeah, it was Harding's 15 for, for foul, Pitty. so there will be two free throws for that well, as well. Anyway, so well, that will be four free throws. Because you have to have the uh, the double bonus foul shots plus the technical foul shots. Well, and Pretty was in the act of shooting. Right. So that, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see Pretty shoot here. And eventually we'll get back to basketball. <laughs> Maybe. Well, the pace we were on, man, we should, we get uh, – Probably be through the third quarter by now, midway yeah. through the fourth quarter. I know. This, this has stopped things down entirely. Twelve two run for Harding over the last three eighteen. Michael, I don't I don't uh Here's your two free throws on the other end. I don't think this stop in action at this point favors anybody. No. Well. I mean, uh, uh, seriously, at, at this point, everybody's been standing around now for close remember, to 10 minutes. Remember I minutes. said that five minutes ago. Yes. <laughs> I just, I don't think it favors anybody. I don't think, I didn't realize it was going to last this long. So now you'll see, you saw Lay, Lay Rock, who's a good free throw shooter, take the free throws the technical free throws. Now Tucker is chosen to take the technical free throws. Pretty shot the free throws to begin with because she was the person who was fouled. I feel like I'm watching a, an overtime penalty shootout. Yeah. <laughs> if that's the case, Southwestern wins on volume, making three out of four, where Harding made just two out of two. Yeah. Now, when it all comes down to it, Southwestern winds up with the ball. So you cut into a deficit one point, ultimately with no time going off the clock, but you get the ball back. So let's play basketball again here in Bartlesville. Pretty looking for a cutter, won't find her, so Tucker will start things out. Winds up in the lane, has to do something. Not the best shot. Man-to-man -man look, but there's some switching going on, enough to leave Layrock open for three. And Lampo fouled. Yeah, Lampo kept that one alive by knocking the ball out. Even over a triple team, decided to stay with it. You know, that's the big deal here is that she's being triple teamed. Not often you mention uh, Jesseville, Arkansas, twice in the same day, talking about that a little bit earlier. Tyler Sakura from Jesseville, Arkansas, the uh, former, well, the yeah, former Mule Rider quarterback. Mm -hmm. Well, we mentioned Hunter Daly. He's a sophomore from Jesseville, Arkansas, the only player on the Monticello roster from the state of Arkansas. Graduated a year ahead of this young lady, Kelly Lampo, freshman. Shout out to the folks at Jesseville. Right there, the Henderson State Reddies, that team. It's gonna be a little bit longer before they take the court. Gray scoop up and under, can't get the roll. And she commits the foul. Position that time underneath by Caples. And Gray will pick it up, so we'll have substitutions now coming in. Gray's one that goes out. Alexa Harvey comes in for her, and Middleton will come, uh, excuse me, come out when the official says she can come out. And look who's going to come back in. So looks like Bob Mui's okay. Well enough to play. 
And Southwestern, this one's interesting because very rarely will you see this. Southwestern literally has four players on the court. Gray had checked out too soon. She <laughs> stepped back just on the court. Harvey comes in now. Falmui comes back in. Good thing there's no more one and one, I guess. Women's game. Second free throw, good. And it's the largest lead of the night now for Harding. 53-45. Pretty stopped and drew the foul from Kearney. And Kearney's fouls are starting to add up. She has four. Well, I know Southwestern was getting a lot of shots on the inside, but still have to go back to the three-point shooting. Just one of seven. You know they're going to have to take more and make more to win this thing. Exactly. Kearney checks out. Cooper checks back in. Free throws have been an issue, too. They really have. For Southwestern, it's, it's not been very good. 10 for 16 from the free throw line. Harding, 11 of 14. By the way, if you're keeping score at home, foul count would be this. Southwestern has committed 14 fouls, Harding 17. Still fairly even. Nice shot, not quite the roll that time for Cooper. It's a good look on the right baseline there. Aska is going to go up strong. And Miller gets a hand up, but Aska pushes that one through. Haven't heard from Aska in a while. We talk about her a lot on defense and what she brings to the table, but you're right, strong is a way to define that basket. Open, Caples for three, nope. And Aska has the board come right to her. Harvey, open, drains it. Three point of the other direction. And Coach Kirby needs a timeout. Minute 27 remains here in the third quarter. Lady Dogs back to within two. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. Opportunity begins here. Southeastern Oklahoma State University. Seize your opportunity. Soar to new heights with our nationally accredited aviation program. Seize your opportunity. Southeastern's renowned education program has launched thousands of teaching careers. Seize your opportunity. From occupational safety, health, and business to behavioral and natural sciences. Seize your opportunity. Southeastern Oklahoma State University. SC.edu. Log on now and seize your opportunity. Southern Nazarene University was just ranked the best college in the state of Oklahoma by Money Magazine. That's big news, but it's not a surprise to us. Money ranks SNU as one of the top 50 colleges you can actually get into and in the top 50 most affordable private colleges in the nation. Why travel when Southern Nazarene University is right here in Bethany, Oklahoma? Inspired academic excellence in a success-driven environment. Southern Nazarene University. Miller around a Lampo and Caples has Tucker come out on her. Still a man-to-man -man look, some switching again going on, and Miller's three from the right corner won't fall. Harding. Southwestern on a run. Sorry, Joe. Harding didn't get the lead by shooting the three. Back-to-back -back possessions, they've missed three-point shots. Southwestern made one a minute ago. See what they do now. Pretty stepped on the line. Less than a minute remaining. Michael, you are exactly right. Sydney Jones comes back in, and that favors a pass inside. Lampo takes a seat for a moment. Thought that uh, Miller was checking out. Be interesting to see Lampo and Jones in at the same time. But Lampo will take a seat now. Not going to risk a foul on her in the last minute of this quarter. Caples for three, and that one's good. It's back to a five-point game. Stopped a 5 nothing run from Southwestern. Give them credit for keep shooting. They had missed on the last two times down. But no, Michael, you do have the point. That is not where they got. That's not how they got there. But it does work. Aska, contact, and Aska can't make the basket go and can't get away from Miller. One more shot likely for Harding. How big would a basket be here? Well, their largest lead's eight. A three would tie that mark. Caples for three, count it! And there's the three-pointer. Michael just mentioned an eight-point advantage for Harding heading into the fourth quarter. Ten minutes left to play, and if this has the feel that you've seen this before for Southwestern, you kind of have. 
What's going to happen, though, in the final quarter? Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. At the University of Arkansas at Monticello, yes, you can. For me, that meant that I could afford to go to college. When I was considering colleges, it was important to find one that my parents and I could afford. So I was happy to find that I could attend the University of Arkansas at Monticello at one of the lowest costs of any four-year college in the state. Affordability, tradition, a great college experience. It all comes together here at UAM. At the University of Arkansas at Monticello, yes, you can. free range chicken, you roam free. It's what you do. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to Geico. It's what you do. Southwestern football team on hand. Some of them watching this game. I said they were the men's basketball team a little bit earlier. My fault. I spotted the wrong ball team there. <laughs> Ask it makes this one fall. Back to six. And full court pressure employed now. Jones, the outlet, waits for her team to get down. Final quarter should be good here in Bartlesville. And we have another game to follow this one. Two seed Arkansas Tech and three seed Henderson State coming up a little bit later on. Shot clock winding down. Paget to Layrock. She has to put something up. Didn't work. No, but, but you're right. Didn't have any other options. She option. didn't have any other option. She had to fire it, and I don't think she expected to get it back. You could hear the crowd and, and players counting down the shot clock, and I think Layrock expected to get it. To her credit, she didn't get the shot blocked. <laughs> she avoided that. Tucker, she'll try a long range three. Top of the key. Long rebound, picked up by Miller and ahead to Caples. Franks with three fouls, doesn't want to pick another one up to start the fourth quarter. Tell you what, if I'm Jones, I drive into her. Instead, Jones loses control of it. To me, Joey, the question is, who from Southwestern is going to step up and make a big shot? We talked about when they played Harding, they scored 103 points. Savannah Gray made six three-pointers. It has been Tucker, Pretty, and Aska, and that's fine. You can win a game when three players play well, but in a game that's going back and forth, you're going to need somebody else to do something. And it won't take much, one or two shots maybe, just to distract some of the momentum. Shot clock down on the other side. Tucker gets the shot up, off the glass and in. Wow. I said in the early going, we didn't need the shot clock. We've seen it run <laughs> down to zero twice already in the fourth quarter. Layrock drives in a better look this time. The Franks gets the board. And a foul on Miller. By the way, Tabor Beer, freshman from Hammond, Oklahoma, has checked into the contest for Southwestern. Number two, who has the ball. It was an eight-point lead for Harding just a moment ago. And Layrock picks up the foul on the court. You know, I... I think maybe it's not offense. Maybe Franks is the player that steps up, grabs a few more rebounds, makes a few passes back to the outside, and uh, gets that offense going a little bit for Southwestern. Now, see, Michael, that's the first time we've seen that in a while. Aska wisely let it go past yeah. half court and then took control before she traveled. And the three-pointer went out of bounds. 
that it was good for Southwestern before it wasn't. Right. Harding, meanwhile, says, okay, we'll take that. Four-point advantage now. And now it's Franks and Lampo on the blocks, battling. Will the ball go into Lampo? Instead, Caples drives in, kicks out. Miller for three. Count it. Back to a seven-point game. She likes that shot deep in the corner. He was in rhythm, and Southwestern's not. No. Back-to-back -back trips to not only come up empty, but not look good doing it. Hedrick checks in now for Alexa Harvey. And Coach Music trying to find the lineup that's going to get her through the last six minutes and 56 seconds. Well, the main thing Southwestern needs to do is to get a stop because Harding is feeling it. Asker comes out a little bit too, too high. She'll pick up the foul on Cooper. It's her third personal. Mentioned early on, Tucker got a hand on that one. Mentioned early on that Southwestern and Harding have met three times here in Bartlesville. Southwestern victorious all three of those times, 2012, 13, and 14. It's been four years since they've met in the postseason. Caples, nice drive. And the freshman up and over the de defense gets a friendly roll as well. It's a nine point Harding advantage. She and Lampo, two freshmen, have 27 points. Miller picks up the foul on the court. And that'll be the second, excuse me, third team foul against Harding. I don't know how this game's going to end up, but it has been a solid defensive performance for Harding, a Southwestern team that averages 85 points a game. I was out to such a quick pace early on, and you know with the men's game, it's, it's almost the reverse. Men's games start off slow, and then suddenly everyone knows how to shoot. Women's games, boy, they found a quick pace early on, and then the defense is locked in. Yeah, it's been the other way around. Southwestern on a little bit of a scoring drought again for the second time here in the half. Open on, on the left side. And Franks took a chance, got the block, but it went out of bounds. More of a strip there than a block. Harding's doing just enough here in the second half. 10 of 22 shooting. Hadn't been the greatest offensive half, but scoring when they need to. Pretty with another rip away. Really, Joe, it's been the five three-pointers they've made in this half. You know what? You're right. 7 from 20 from behind the arc for Harding. Southwestern just 2 of 10. Talked about volume. There's your volume right there. And a higher shooting percentage as well. Pretty from long range tries to make something happen, and that's not it. Harding looking to take the lead to double figures. Lampo, count it! And she'll go to the line for the and one. And the lead has expanded. Once again, all set up by the assist. Great pass. Cooper gets credit for the assist. Harding 17 and 14 on the year, 12 and 10 in the GAC. A tale of two halves of the season for Harding. Struggled to begin with. But in the second half of the year, specifically into 2017, 2018, as the lead has now blossomed to 12, Harding has won eight of its last nine contests. I'm trying to make it nine of its last 10. In good shape to do so now. Tucker fouled as she goes up. Before that nine, that 10 game stretch that I just spoke about, Michael, 
The loss before that, winning nine of 10, was a loss to Southwestern at Southwestern, 103-77. Harding may be getting revenge for that tonight. Media timeout, we'll take a break. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. Yeah. Ah! A triangle solo? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Sam and Joanna saved by switching to Geico. Ow! 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Across divisions, sports, championships, and schools for nearly half a million student athletes. College sports create lifelong opportunity, and that starts with education. We've raised the academic bar so more are earning degrees, creating healthier campuses by working with the nation's brightest minds, and making sure more have the chance to succeed and are supported on their journey. But beyond the numbers, it's about opportunity, and we're working to provide it for every student athlete. Southwestern cheerleaders still fighting for their team. The team that's trailing by 12 right now, though. And Haley Tucker's on the line. And Michael, I mean, it's it's been a good good tournament so far for a few of these Harding players. It most certainly has 16 rebounds in this game for Kelly Lampo. Her numbers through two games, and this one's not over yet. 38 points and 25 boards. Kelly Lampo, welcome to Bartlesville. No doubt, your team is glad you're here. Like 12 of 20 at the free throw line for Southwestern. Well, a foul's going to be called before Padgett could call a timeout, so it works actually to her advantage. It does. And Harding with a few timeouts to be able to burn here in the final quarter. <laughs> Mentioned Harding. Having been here a time or two before, 12 and four overall in the tournament. That's not, not a bad record. Champions in 2015 and 2017, trying to get back to that championship game. Kelly Lampo doing her part. Harding has won seven of its last eight GAC tournament games and the ball Fortuitously for Southwestern goes right to Franks and she's fouled. I know it's another sport, but haven't we seen this script from Harding this year? A football team that started 0-3. <laughs> yes. Went on to win their next eight regular season games on into the postseason as well. Hey, and if, if this plays out along the same lines, all you have to say is Harding's softball team is in for a good well, year. There you go. Because we saw this last year with the football team, the basketball team, the softball team. And so yeah. if Harding softball team started off the season, you know, 0-8, look out. That's Frank's first point tonight. Layrock with a tough rebound. Second free throw doesn't fall, though. It's still a 12-point game. You don't have to have threes just yet, but pretty soon you're likely going to need them. But first, for Southwestern, you have to have a stop. And Harding milking the shot clock now. Lampo has it ripped away. Mel gets it right back. Block. And how did Hedrick come away with that? I don't know. Aska makes an adjustment, but doesn't take the ball with her. I believe time got called. That's exactly what happened while Harding still had the ball, so the Lady Bisons maintain possession. And we'll be back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. Don't you worry, my child. Everything's going to be just fine. Little darling, you keep on walking. Because I ain't never going to leave your side. As kids fall in love with sports, our universities are working every day to keep college sports safe. 
so you can watch them play with a little less worry and a little more joy. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin. Or whether you're rich, poor, or in the middle. No matter what you play, if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Well, there's part of Press Row. And one of the officials here, by the way, the Adam Hooper Memorial Press Row, that is, in honor of our friend Adam, who passed not long after the GAC tournament last year, a fixture here in Bartlesville. Audra Tope, Terry Lajeunesse, two of the people that keep us on track, several others there as well. Layrock set to inbound this, and it's full court pressure again from Southwestern coming out of the break. I should probably say Audra Keedy now. You should. She's been married a few years. Scott would probably appreciate that. Two more points for Lampo. And she has a game high, 21, tied with Tucker for that high. And nothing falling for Southwestern. Three minutes remaining. Lampo in a fight for the rebound. We'll see how they sort this one out. I'll tell you They're what. They're going to go to the monitor. Yeah, <laughs> Tucker at least has control of one thing on the court right now. That's the officials. <laughs> when she indicates that she wants something reviewed, she's been able to get the call most times tonight. But uh, that is something worth looking at there. And, and again, we, we talked about this before. I mean, you know, just fighting to get that rebound. But you have to watch how you, how you move your elbows around while you're doing it. Well, Southwestern, the number one seed in this tournament. And the top seed in the tournament has played in each of the last five women's basketball tournament championship games here for the Great American Conference. Last time the uh, number one seed was not in the final, it included these two teams. You have to go back all the way to 2012 to not get the top seed in the tournament in the final. Southwestern, we mentioned, was victorious over Harding in that tournament final. Southeastern South beat Arkansas Tech. That's right. Southwestern was the number two seed. Harding was the number four seed. And in the first round of the tournament, eight-seeded Southeastern defeated Arkansas Tech 84-72. It's back in 2012, which all of a sudden seems like a long time ago. Well, it really does. Just like when basketball was played on this court. I can tell you that uh, I was here that night calling the game on the radio for Southeastern. And if Southeastern doesn't win that game, I'd probably go back to Durant. It was an unsportsmanlike foul called, and this <laughs> over here giving us some um, information on it right now. Kay. So go ahead, So Joey. here is Haley Tucker coming in. She commits the foul. After the fact, there's an unsportsmanlike foul on Kelly Lampo. Two free throws will be shot. Southwestern will get the ball. I'm going to clarify that. Two free throws will be attempted. There you go. Going to... Rough night a couple of times from the free throw line tonight for Southwestern. 13 of 22 from the line, 59.1%. Well, and talk about a tale of uh, two nights of basketball. Southwestern at this time in their previous game was on their way to a 25-0 run. They've not had a field goal in their last five minutes and 11 seconds in this one. Now you have to talk about good defense from Harding. They've played that tonight, but effective when they've needed to be on the offensive end. As a matter of fact, five of eight from the field here in the fourth quarter, that's 63%. For the game, they're shooting 43%, but 50% even here in the, in the second half. Padgett has the technical foul charged to her name. You see the little T on, on the graphics in front of me. I don't see one yet beside Lampo's name. She has just the three fouls. Yeah. 
second free throw falls. And Southwestern with just a little time left. And pretty shot doesn't go. They're going to have to start shooting the ball from outside. Now they're going to have to, and they're going to have to get stops here, but expect another 20-plus ticks to come off the clock because Harding will move the ball around. I don't know if you don't uh, foul someone early on. You need the defensive stop. You can almost pick and choose who you want to foul, though. And Layrock's drive, drive in doesn't work. Lampo can't wow. get the shot to fall and an offensive board. And that offensive rebound, so big. And Fallon could have taken that shot there, wisely chose not to, another three or four seconds off the clock before she's fouled. Well, what can you say about a, a Harding team that has just come alive so well here in the second part of the season and is extending into the postseason? looking for an opportunity to secure an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. They have to get to Sunday to get there to have that opportunity, and they're 2.15 away. It's been pretty remarkable, hasn't it? Now we stop and talk about that again for a moment. Harding has to keep winning to keep playing. Southwestern will be in the NCAA tournament. Right. It's just a matter of what the seeding will be. Yeah, of course. Um Central Missouri ahead of them in the regional rankings, but Central Missouri has already bowed out of their tournament. I well, just hope they don't give the nod to Augustana. Everybody yes. has to travel north. That that is that's the thing. Augustana in South Dakota. Things are just starting to warm up around Oklahoma and Arkansas. Get on the road and get up there in one of those cold places again. Yeah. Ask it with another opportunity at the free throw line. Makes that one. Southwestern 15 of 26 from the free throw line this evening. Now, Michael, I think you have to, at this point, you have to go for a quicker foul. I think maybe let one more possession play out. Yep, Tucker's going to foul there. That'd be just her third. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're going to take 15 seconds off the shot clock, then yes, <laughs> might as well go ahead and foul right away. Arkansas Tech coming up next, Joey. We watched them in shoot-around this morning as they will take on a Henderson State team. They split during the regular season. Arkansas Tech looked loose. They had music playing during their shoot-around. They were ready to go, it seemed like. Of course, that's been a while now. It was earlier this morning, but... Uh, that's going to be a fun one up next as well. I think so. Harding with a big third quarter, 26 to 15, as Hedrick tries a three, won't go. Aska corrals the rebound, and a timeout is called for, so Southwestern will maintain possession. It's 26 to 15, the score there in the third quarter, and that included a three-pointer at the buzzer, which meant for an eight-point advantage heading into the fourth quarter. And uh, that was a big deal. Right now we look at the Arkansas Tech team. You were talking about them. They're getting ready to come out here in just a few moments. Looking at their rivals playing on the court right now. And Harding looking to move on to Sunday. Joey, Saturday has not been friendly to this Southwestern team in late February, early March. Had a Saturday loss to Southern Nazarene and a Saturday loss to East Central. This will be the third Saturday in a row if they don't come back in this one. Frank's called upon and drains it. Full court pressure now. It's a diamond look. If you don't get a steal. You almost have to go for a quick foul. Pass down the court, Layrock open, and that's how you beat the pressure. 15 point advantage once again. If 
Frank's three-pointer no good. Harding matches 2012 Harding as the lowest seed to make the women's basketball title game. They were the fourth seed back in 2012. They're the fourth seed this year. They are the lowest seed in the GAC tournament to make a title game. By the way, the lowest seed to win the tournament, that'd be Southwestern. They were the three seed back in 2014. Montana Lewis, Ariel Saunders, the Haney sisters were out there in 2012. That was a great group. Frank's down the court, off the glass and in. The time's gonna run out on this Southwestern trip here in Bartlesville. Harding will stick around for one more day. Now, Southwestern fans, again, you've not seen the last of this team. Just depends on where you're going to see this team play next. It, it is likely not going to be Weatherford. It is possible it could be Warrensburg, Missouri. And there is a possibility of South Dakota. Augustana at 24 and three overall with their division two record at the last uh, release of the regional rankings, 22 and three in region record. Kelly Lampo getting a well-deserved cheer from the Harding fan base. And Michael, what's she done in two games here in Bartlesville? 40 points and 27 rebounds. Paget also going out to the applause of the crowd. Future's bright for Harding, but right, right now the future is here. Well, I, you always say that whenever I say the future's bright, and I was going to follow it <laughs> if you didn't, but yeah. <laughs> Franks can't get the long-range shot to fall, and time will tick away here as Harding moves on to championship Sunday. 78-63, the four seed knocks off the top seed here in the Great American Conference semifinal. We're gonna throw it out to Paul right now as uh, we have one more game on the docket tonight. Paul? Thank you, Joey. It is Harding University, which has punched its ticket to the championship game to be played tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Folks, this is the first time since the inaugural Great American Conference Championship Tournament back in 2012 that the number one seed will not be appearing in the final. That year, the fourth seed was Harding advancing to the final against Southwestern Oklahoma. Now we get to the business of finding out just who the dance partner will be for the Lady Bisons tomorrow because coming up at 8 o'clock, it will be second seed Arkansas Tech and third seed Henderson State. Those two teams split their meetings in the regular season. We've got one more great game to go here tonight. Until then, for my broadcast partners, Joey McWilliams and Michael Westbrook, I'm Paul Smith, back in a bit on the GAC Sports Network.